The new look Darwin City Council is already making headlines after meeting for the first time this week. The council has decided to allow councillors to take part in meetings over the phone or the internet. It's caused division among the council itself with concerns the practice could become the norm. I caught up with Darwin's new Lord Mayor, Katrina Fong Lim, earlier, who voted for the change. Katrina Fong Lim, welcome to the program. Thanks, Louisa. Why do you support the move to allow councillors to take part in meetings via telephone or Skype? Well, because it's about access to the meetings by um, members who have to be away from Darwin for whatever reason. You know, there could be a family emergency outside of Darwin or they have to be um, outside of Darwin for work. And really, um, it was about people being able to exercise their democratic right to participate in the discussions um, that are on hand for council. Why is there a, a demand for this? I mean, are councillors frequently not attending meetings? No, I don't think it is um, that. I think it was actually just about the opportunity to, I guess, step into the 21st century as well and utilise the technologies that's available for us. So I thought, I think we actually are, are leading the way when it comes to um, allowing our members to meet. And it's only actually, incidentally, there's a, there's a misconception. It's actually only... Um, at an ordinary council meeting, uh, which is uh, the big, the uh, full-on council meetings, and also they can only do it with the permission of the entire councils. Alderman Gary Lambert voted against the move and says it's going to create a cyber council, and he says it shows a lack of accountability. How can you be sure that this allowance uh, won't be abused? I think the assurance is the fact that it is in fact not an easy option. Uh, anybody who's actually uh, participated in, in teleconferences would realise that it's actually a very, um, a very different way of doing business and, and it, it's not, not the easiest option to do. A moratorium on Saturday parking was also discussed at Council this week. Where are things at there? Well, we're pro progressing along. Um, on the 16th of a uh, April, which was our first meeting, I proposed that we get a report about the full consequences of uh, putting on a moratorium. Because basically, you know, there are probably operational issues that we have to actually consider uh, before we actually make those types of decisions. And so we've asked the, uh, the staff to come back with a full report. Why are you pushing ahead with this? Why is it so important to you when uh, most of the parking in the CBD is actually free. I mean, people can still access free parking on a Saturday. Yeah, on a Saturday, they certainly can access uh, free parking in all the off-street parking um, areas. I think it's important because we have an obligation as elected members to keep the faith with our, our constituents. And it was clearly an issue from both the city traders and from people that I was talking to out in the northern suburbs. Now, we're seeing more and more shops shut down in the CBD. Do you acknowledge that this is a problem and what do you propose to do about it? Louisa, I really don't know um, what the numbers are. Uh, we are receiving anecdotal um, comments, the fact that shops are shutting. They might be shut. You don't know the reasons why they're shutting um, yet. You know, we haven't had a study done on that. I think um, the only thing that council can do is to continue to encourage people to come into the city and to work cooperatively with organisations like the, Dar the newly formed Darwin City Traders, Retail Traders Association, which is a group of um, shopkeepers who, who want to be proactive in, in this space. How are you going to rejuvenate the city? I'm going to look at making sure that we can make the city performance space um, more, better um, available. We have Rain Tree Park, it's a great um, space to perform in and um, to encourage performers to come in so that people actually have some activity then uh, at least down that end of the city. Um, we've got you know the alfresco dining in the centre of the city which is a very successful and, um, and I think actually making sure that there's some life and, ha and act activity happening. You put out a press release during your campaign that you titled Fong Lim Targets Itinerants. Do you regret that now? The only thing I regret about that press release was the title. Uh, what I was saying in the press release was that we need to talk about the issues around antisocial behaviour. It was never actually about itinerance. It was actually about the ability for our families to be able to get out into the parks, into their public spaces and to be able to use them in a, a safe and um, supportive environment. And um, there is no doubt that we do have an antisocial behaviour um, issue within our city and I think all I was saying was basically, let's talk about it. Let's see whether there are areas that council can work in. Clearly, 
clearly it is a very complex issue and there is a lot of layers of, of organisations and stakeholders working in this space. Um, but is there something that council could be doing and in this area where we could be encouraging um, pe more people out into our parks? Katrina Fonglim, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you, Louisa.